Hello, hello. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is Pastor Ray Curry. Once again, welcome to the unction. Our subject tonight is the failing economy and the mighty God. I know I have been on other platforms on social media giving clips of really when I got riled up about this subject, but I just wanted to offer a few thoughts tonight. I know a couple Mondays ago, we were talking about the the need for insight in this season. And now I want to speak to you about what is happening currently in this economy, what is happening around, behind the scenes and what it's all leading to. I want to thank all of you for being a part of this platform. Thank you for tuning in. Those of you who have been faithful to this work, uh, this work has been growing and expanding, and we look forward to what God is doing among us. So without further ado, we're going to go into the word of the Lord. I would like to start, good to see you, daughter of the king, at Revelations chapter 18, starting at verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven, from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not her plagues. This is the book of Revelations where Christ is saying, Come on out of Babylon. Come on out of Babylon. I was encouraging our ministry on Sunday whatever Babylon got going on, let them have their stuff. Let them have their customs. Let Babylon have their manner. Let Babylon have their award shows and, and, and let Babylon celebrate itself. But whatever the scriptures are saying, whatever the Lord our Christ was saying, let us obey him. Let us obey Jesus. Amen. Brian, Keith, Sarah, good to see you, brother Porkchop. Whatever the Lord's, I want to tell you, you precious people who are here every week, whatever the Lord says, let's just do it. Let's read the word of God. I remember what Mary said to the people at the marriage of Cana. He said, whatever my son says to you, this is what Mother Mary said. She said, whatever my son says to you, do it, do it. And I want to say to the church, uh, James 65, same thing. Whatever the Lord has said, let's just do it. If it's written in, in his word, if, if it was given to us by the hand of his apostles, if his prophets have declared it, if it applies to the New Testament church, let's do it. And let us be found faithful in all of his house. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to read the rest to you. Uh, well, starting at verse 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone, people going to work and going to work, but there's a millstone coming, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence, shall that great city Babylon be thrown down. I'm, I'm going to say what I got to say. And shall be found no more at all. It says with violence, Babylon is going to be thrown down. I know I'm speaking very quickly tonight because this is very heavy on my heart and in my spirit. Babylon is not a place only. Babylon is a world system. It started at the Tower of Babel in uh, the book of Genesis chapter 11. After they came out of the, the ark, after the flood, the people settled in the land of Shinar. In uh, the Bible, is called Shinar. In the history books, it's called Sumer. These people came and settled in the area of what is modern-day Iraq. This is where ancient Babylon is. They built a tower. And when they built that tower, the Lord our God knocked it down and confounded their languages and called that place Babel. And ever since then, falsehood, has been spewed out of a tower. Listen to what I'm saying. We don't have the Tower of Babel anymore, but what we have is television towers. 
What we have is cell phone towers. What we have is all types of towers of entertainment. And that is what the, the, the tower that is putting out the false information today. Whereas in the ancient time, it was the Tower of Babel. That's why you still have Nimrod and Samarimus has come in so many different forms around the world. In the Bible, it's Nimrod. His mother was Samarimus, according to history. And in, in different cultures, they have different names. I told you before, in Greece, their name is Zeus and Hera. In Egypt, their name is Isis and Osiris. In uh, the Nordic countries in Europe, they're called Odin and Freya. If you go into the Catholic Church, it's Mother Mary and Jesus. So I'm trying to show you that these same demons have gone all over the world and they're still being produced today. So Babylon is a system. It is a world system. And God said it's going to be destroyed with violence. So let me get into this, Brian Keith. Good to see you. Let me get into this violence that is going out today. I want you to understand that what is happening today is that there's a spirit of violence in the land. That's why you will never stop seeing so many shootings. I'm, I'm going to show it to you again. Revelation 18, 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. That's why you see so much on your news. That's why there are so many wars. That's why we're not going to get a control of these guns that's out here in the streets. I'm not against the Second Amendment. Believe me, I got something upstairs waiting on you if you want to try my household. But what I am saying to you is there will never be a controlling of the gun situation because God promised that violence would be in the land. Even if you look at, I, I don't know if this, uh, this man is going to be locked up tomorrow. I don't know that. Uh, Donald Trump said that he's going to be arrested tomorrow. Protest, protest, protest. I don't know. But it, it's just amazing to me that violence is being incited and the man is asking for protests and, and all this kind of stuff. And, and I'm thinking to myself, how many young men have lost their fathers to the incarceration system? And there wasn't no protests. How many people being locked up for minor things, their life taken away from them for minor things? And there wasn't no protests. But yet, you about to go to jail for messing with some woman that you paid money to so she can be quiet, and we're supposed to burn down America. I think this is a foolish spirit. I think this is a foolish spirit. But at the same time, the Bible says that violence would be released in this last day. The scripture says that violence would be released in this last day. And it don't shock me that so much violence is being incited, even from the highest parts of the nation. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. I'm not here to say guilty or innocent, but I'm just saying it's very funny that when you feel like you shouldn't be put in prison, you're going to say, oh, go flood the streets, burn America down if I go to jail. I have a cousin don't belong in jail. I know the boy didn't do that, what they accused him of. But yet, we ain't inciting violence in the street. Man, get over yourself. Lord, help me. I, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. That was verse 21. Now, verse 22. And the voice of harpers, come on here, Grammys. Come on here, Oscars. Revelations 18, 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsmen, no arts. I don't care what kind of arts. It says, and no craftsmen of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone, all this work in the economy and the the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Rail, good to have you. True child of the most high God. Hello, hello, hello. We appreciate you. Revelation 18, 22. Tell me ain't gonna be no Grammys. Revelation 18, 22. Tell me we ain't gonna be worrying about Angela Bassett getting snubbed for no Oscar. In a little while, 
ain't none of this mess going to matter. In a little while, you ain't going to be worrying about did somebody get a, a, a shiny idol to take home. In a little while, God going to stop the record labels. We ain't going to be arguing about whether or not this stuff is satanic because God is tired of all of it. God is tired of all of it. And quite frankly, I'm tired of it too. It is wicked. I'm going to show you according to the word of God, what they're doing to you is wicked. This Babylonian system. Oh my goodness. Let, let me go because I don't want to hold you all night. I want you to pray saints. I want you to press through to God. I want you to hear the word. I want you to walk in the spirit. Lord have mercy. Verse 23, and the light of the candle, listen here, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. If you read at the beginning of the book of Revelations, you'll know who the candlestick is. It's the church. After a while, you ain't got to worry about preachers like Pastor Ray holding up the light. The candle won't shine at all in you anymore. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. If you read the Bible, you'll know who the bridegroom is. His name is Jesus. You'll know who the bride is. Her name is the church. He's saying that you ain't gonna have to worry about nobody trying to tell you the truth. You ain't gonna have to worry about someone triggering you. Oh, I feel triggered. You're coming against my rights. Uh, oh, you, you don't wanna acknowledge my pronouns. After a while, you ain't going to have to worry about the, cam the candle. You're not going to have to worry about the bridegroom. You're not going to have to worry about the bride. God is going to handle you, and you're going to wish that some light of some candle would be in this world. But let's keep going. It says at the end, For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries, pharmacia, were all the nations deceived. And that's why we have an opiate problem. That's why we have an overdose problem. Because when it says sorcery in the Greek, it's the word pharmakia. And it means drugs. God was saying in the last days, one of the characteristics of your nations is going to be that people are going to be OD and they're going to be stuck on prescriptions. They're going to be stuck on heroin uh, and, and meth and, and street drugs and all kinds of things. He said the world is going to be deceived by the sorceries, but not only that, but also sorceries, deceit. The, the things, the incantations, the spells put on your media. The spells put on your media, saints. The world was deceived by it. And I'm going to go to verse 24. And in her was found the blood of the prophets and of the saints and of all that was slain upon the earth. This world has a bloodlust against the people who would tell the truth. This world has a bloodlust against those that would be honest with the world. But I'm going to be honest. I, I don't care what it costs me. I'm going to keep being honest about the scripture and about this word. And I'm going to just walk you through why we're seeing what we're seeing with the economy, what happened with SVB. I don't care if you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican, because I'm going to, like I said, this sword, I got cut left and cut right. This sword I got, it slapped in the front hand and slapped you in the back hand. I don't care what political party you're on. You're all wicked. God's going to burn this place down. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. And I'm going to show you what, what this mess really, really come from with SVB Bank and Signature Bank and all this mess that's happening. I'm going to show you. And I'm going to give you a very, very quick synopsis because I know that it's multifaceted issues, but it just is what it is. You got to think all the way back to 2008, Washington Mutual, AIG, uh, all these banks that was too big to fail, too big to fail. And then they did something called quantitative easing and started giving regulations. Back then, these bankers in this nation ran the economy into the ground in 2008. And when they ran the economy into the ground, what did the government do? It bailed them out, said they too big to fail. You can lose your house. You can lose your investments. 
You can lose your businesses. You can lose your contracts. But these big companies, they're too big to fail. And not only are they too big to fail, everyone who was on the boards of these companies still got their bonuses. And who did that? Your precious Obama. Your precious Barack Obama. Lord, I know somebody got mad, but I got to tell the truth. Oh, believe me, I'm going to cut the other direction because I don't like none of them. Barack Obama, he signed over trillions of dollars to these companies so that it would bail them out. The executives got their money and, and they were able to take the money and they was given quantitative easing, which was just free money. They were supposed to take the money and create more jobs, but instead they bought their stock options. They bought more in the company and put the money back in their own pockets and did not loan to smaller businesses the way they were supposed to and they were allowed to do it. But as a result, as a result, they were given some regulations that they had to have a certain amount of liquidity. Come here, come here. I know, I know we get real deep in the spirit and we get in the word, but I want to show you what's going on around you. These banks were supposed to have a certain amount of liquidity, at least 10% on hand so that if depositors come and want their money, they have enough money to uh, give them their deposits back. But what happens? There were lobbyists who wanted those regulations off the banks. The banks had lobbyists who wanted the regulations off of them so that they can go gamble with your money. That's what SVB lobbied for. And when did they get what they want? They got it in 2018. Yes, they bought a house in the Hamptons. Did that too. When did they take off the regulations? In 2018 under your Donald Trump. The economy is crazy today because Donald Trump and his cohorts left a ticking time bomb in place. Yeah. Yeah, you, you thought I was just here to talk about the Democrats. Nah, I'm not that type of guy. I'll fight you all. I'll fight you all because you're all wicked. The Democrats, there were 17 Democrats along with the Republicans in 2018 that voted to take the restrictions off the re regulations off the banks so that they could gamble with people's money. So they could gamble with people's money. And they overgambled and they bought treasury bonds because they thought it was safe. But then when the feds raised up their interest rates, it cut down the value of the treasury bonds. And then when people went to the bank like, hey, give me my money back because y'all losing money because they raised up the interest rates. When people was going to get that money, they had to sell their treasury bonds at a loss to get enough money to cover the deposits. And when there was a run on the bank, SVB, Signature Bank, and so forth, they collapsed. That's why we are where we are today. But I'm, I'm going to explain to you, that is all in the plan. That's all in the plan. Why? Because the plan is, we, we had the second largest banks collapse in history, the third largest banks collapse in history. Why? Because we want a centralization of the money. Yes, big row, left and right wing, same bird. Citibank, Wells Fargo, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America, the big four. We want to centralize all the money. We want to control all the money. This stuff not happening by happenstance. The dollar getting weaker. Your dollar is buying less. The Bible says in the book of Revelation chapter 6 that there will be a day come where a measure of wheat will be for a penny. Uh, three measures of barley would be for a penny. See that you hurt not the oil and the wine. I showed you that when we talked about the sons of Issachar. The penny is the Daenerys. If you talk about $7 an hour, $8, hour, $56, $60, that's literally one meal. You can go to the grocery store and get one meal for your family today. We're, we're in a way living out this scripture, saints. We're living out this scripture, saints. The judge is at the door. The judge is at the door. I don't understand how people can't see that the judge is at the door. How are we still playing church? How are we still playing religion? 
The judge is at the door and we're playing around with this thing because if the money centralizes and then we go to electronic currency, listen, the world is going towards electronic currency. That's what's happening. And when it goes towards electronic currency, then we can get to a point where if something's not in your right hand or in your forehead, you won't be able to buy or sell. And I know there are different understandings of that scripture because a, a surface understanding of that scripture is that if you have the works of Satan and the thoughts of Satan, you can do commerce in this world. I know that's an understanding of it, but I'm also seeing Something that looks very, very, very similar to what the Bible said. Come on, help me here. Come on and help me here. Thank you, daughter of the king, uh, John uh, Scow. Yes, I'm telling you, we're getting closer to something dark, saints. That's why cryptocurrency is coming to effect. And there's a centralization of the banks. We want the smaller banks to fail so that we can control all the money. Because if you're not paying attention the East is setting up to be able to operate without the West. The East is setting up to be able to operate without the West. That's why Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping are meeting in order to set up a confederacy where they're able to operate without the West. That's why the uh, Saudi Arabia, the, the United Arab Emirates, uh, Dubai, all of these countries are creating currencies that is actually backed by a commodity because they know the American dollar is fiat money. Lord, help me today. I can go deep. I can go deep. I'm trying not to lose you. I'm just trying to let you know the Bible is real. When God said that there's a time where people won't be able to do commerce without something that is centralized, I, and and I, I, I promise you, I prophesied this in 2020. And, and also, I, I'm going to just put this in here too. I prophesied at the end of 2020, I saw the leader of his, his song, Brian Houston. I saw him and he was filled with spirit. I, he was filled with hell. And I saw him and I, I heard something, something guttural just speaking out of him. And I told the people, I said, listen, get away from his song that corrupt to the court. This is 2020. I said that corrupt to the core. That man has already received the mark. I said the mark because he has the, the works of Satan. He has the thoughts of Satan. And I told the people that man was corrupt. And people, once again, a part of that whole movement, Hillsong, Bethel, Elevation, the people, a part of those movements, looked at me like I had five heads. Then you see what happened to Carl Lentz. Then you see what's been going on with Brian Houston, how he covered up for his father when he knew what his father was doing to those little ones. Brian Houston was doing in the hotel rooms, getting drunk and doing things with women that wasn't his wife, whatever the things were. And I was warning the people in 2020 and I told them judgment was coming and they said it was the year of vision in 2020. They said it was the year of double in 2020. They said it was a year of blessing in 2020. And I stood up at the beginning of 2020 and said, God said he's going to send worldwide judgment. And three months later, the whole country was shut down. I'm just saying what happened. You can get mad as you want. I, you can say, I believe in prophecy. I don't believe in prophecy. I believe God talk. I don't believe God talk. I'm just telling you what happened. And our ministry opened when everyone else's ministry shut down because people knew what I said. That's why it opened. That's why it was successful because I was one out of a thousand standing up and saying, nope, that's not what I'm receiving from the Lord. Anyway, let, let me go on. Let me go on, because people think you're crazy. But I'm going to show you another reason why God is angry at the banks. And this is a spiritual principle. We're not Israel. We're spiritual Israel, according to the word of God. But there's a principle here. And I'm going to show you another reason why God is angry with the monetary system. I'm going to show it to you. Some of y'all never saw this before. Exodus 22, 25, and 26. If thou lend money to any of my people that is poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as a usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. Lord have mercy. Why wasn't this preached in every pulpit? Usury is interest, saints. God is angry at how the banks 
have abused us with compound interest, APR, annual percentage yield. God is angry at how the banks have exploited the lack of knowledge the poor have. God is angry at the stress that the banks have, the Babylonian system has put on the people, have given you usual, usury and have abused you. God saw in 2008 when people lost their houses from these adjustable mortgages, these balloon mortgages. God saw the exploitation of the poor and God has come to judge. I want the poor to lift up your heads for your deliverer is not. Your deliverance is not. Lift up your head. You've been made rich in God. You may not have money, but you have an avenger. You have someone who has seen your poverty and he's coming with fire in his eyes against them who have put usury upon you. And you are here stressed out, out of your mind. Lord, I'm working hard in the, in, the, in the inflation going on up. You're working hard in the bills going on up. You're working hard in the groceries going on up. God see it. God see it. God see the leaders of this nation who's made the way of God's people hard who has given them bitter bondage. You're living just enough to eat, just enough to survive, just enough to have enough. And God see it. God see it. And then the false prophets out here fix their mouth to come and take advantage of you too, to tell you, so into me, so into me, so into me. Give me your money. Give me your 10%. Know that the tithe wasn't even put on the church. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I said I'm a preacher. Yeah, I said it. The tithe wasn't even put on the church. It's a wonderful principle that was before the law. It's a wonderful principle. And God will bless the 10th part. And the tithe wasn't money. It was yield. It was produce. But the tithe comes from before the law. When man looked at his hands, the Bible says when you don't have a law, but yet you do the law without the law, that it is a law unto itself. Other words, when people didn't even know God in other lands in Babylon, they looked at their hands and saw 10 digits and decided they would give one-tenth of their work to the gods. They did this in other nations because there was a universal principle that I believe the Lord has honored, but he made it a law unto his people, okay? So the people gave a tenth and the Lord blessed it and ain't nothing wrong with it. But the bottom line is that it's not a commandment upon the church and these lying Dogs like Creplo Dollar sit up here and after he made himself fat and made himself rich, now he's talking about, well, I taught it wrong. Well, give the money back, you lying, backsliding heifer. Give the money back then. Go sell that jet and give them widows their money back. Give the fatherless their money back. And you got brothers like me you got brothers like me out here operating off a, a, a pack of now laters and a shoestring. <laughs> and we get looked at and persecuted. And these wicked dogs get worshipped. The devil is alive. The, the avenger is now. The judge is standing at the door. The judge is standing at the door. And I can't wait. I'm excited about Jesus. Because I know he's coming with fire in his eyes. Feet like brass representing judgment. Hair and head like wool representing righteousness and wisdom. Sword coming out of his mouth, the word of God. His garments dipped in blood, which is his vengeance. He's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I and Lord Jesus ain't even got to the second verse. But the first verse is just about interest. And God is going to tear up everything because they have abused you just with interest. But let me look at this. Verse 26 says, If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, come on collateral, come on collateral and baits, thou shalt deliver it unto him by that the sun goeth down. We have payday loans 
over here in East Coast, South Carolina. We have payday loans. We have something called title loans where they'll hold your title hostage until you pay an outrageous interest. I mean like 300% interest. Every month you pay in, you, you borrow $300, but you pay in $300 a month plus the interest, plus the principal to cover the first loan. So what, are, what am I talking about? The Bible is saying that they're wrong for holding your stuff hostage. They know you have a vehicle. They should not hold your vehicle hostage. They should not hold your land hostage. They should not hold your things hostage. They know you need it. They know you need your car to get around. And they're taking your title and holding it hostage. Saints of God, God is going to judge this place because they have abused you. God is going to judge this place because they have shorted you. They have done you wrong. And I want you to know that what's happening in this world is not by happenstance. The Lord is doing it on purpose because this is the judgment uh, upon the economic system. That's why one day the stock market will go up, the next day it'll go down. It'll go up, it'll go down. And everybody's just doing stuff reactionary. And there's no stability in it. And as soon as SVB's signature bank went down, what did Joe Biden do? He ran in front of a camera. I mean, two little tiny banks. They ain't even the, they're the second and third biggest in American history, but they're not the biggest. These are two little banks. And two little banks made the President of the United States run in front of a camera first thing Monday morning to calm everybody down. Daughter of the King, Brian Key, Child of the Most High God, Red 52, yes, not for the day, man. And I, I want you to understand that two little banks did that. The most powerful man in the world had to run on camera. Why? Because he's trying to keep the economy real calm because you don't have that much wiggle room. The FDIC just used their funds to cover SVB Bank, and those funds are almost depleted. So if it happened again, they don't have any reserve. They don't have anywhere else to get it from. About to be some quantitative easing. You're about to start printing some fiat money. Just fooling everybody into thinking they have an economy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. That's what's going to happen. Because the FDIC have almost depleted what they got. He ran on camera to make sure everybody calmed back down. But the economy is sick. It's sick. That's why two little banks could make the president of the United States run on camera. The economy is sick. Don't let the enemy fool you. But I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you another thing. You ain't being paid right. You ain't being paid right. I remember reading the Amazon uh, uh, report where a young man died and was laying on the floor 20 minutes. 20 minutes before somebody found his body. And then came out the next week, Jeff Bezos bought a half billion dollar yacht. The drivers for Amazon have to carry a bucket with them. Can't even stop trying to get us our little bracelet. Trying to get us our little shower curtain. They can't even stop. And you got the, the owners of these companies with all these crazy bonuses. God is going to judge them. The Bible says, and I'm, I'm, so, I'm just so riled up about this. The Bible says in James chapter, because you don't know the Lord. The Lord is concerned about these things. The Lord is concerned about these things. James chapter 5 says, go to now, you rich men. Now, if I'm not supposed to worry about it, why is it in the New Testament? Why is it written by a New Testament apostle? Not only is it in the New Testament somewhere in, in the four Gospels in the book of Acts, it's written after Pentecost by an apostle to the church. Go to now, you rich men. Weep in how." For your miseries, which shall come upon you, your treasure, your silver and your gold is moth eaten. And the wages of the poor you have kept back by fraud. You're not paying us right. How is it that everything is inflated except minimum wage? 
Why is everything adjusted for inflation except minimum wage? Because the wages of the poor are being held back by fraud. Thus saith the Lord through his apostle James. You liar. You liar who get up in your pulpits on Sunday and act like God not concerned. Yes, he is. He's concerned about my problems. He's concerned about my stress. He's concerned about my life. How do I know he's concerned? Because he said that even the hairs on my head, he number them. And I get haircuts. He number the hairs on my head. He knows about you. He knows about me. You can't tell me God not concerned about me. He knows. The, Jesus said that you can't turn one hair on your head, white or dark. That means he's the one. He knows whether or not we can change our hair color. The Lord knows what's happening uh, into us neurologically, chemically, what's causing me to be stressed. The hair turning white or black. The hair turning white on our heads because of our stress. The hair that falls out because of worration. The Lord sees it and he knows. The Lord sees it and he knows. I refuse to be a preacher that preach half the gospel. Well, my Republican buddies at the country club won't like it if I talk about this. Or oh, my uh, Democrat buddies over at the club, they won't like it if I talk about this. My, my uh, Greeks, my Greeks, my pledges, they won't like me if I talk. I don't care about none of you. I don't need nothing but Jesus. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, the cattle on a thousand hills, it belonged to him. I don't care about you jokers. I'm going to be all right. He said he'll supply my need according to his riches and glory. I don't have to lock hand in hand. The Bible says if the wicked do lock hand in hand, they still can't stand. He will bury the proud in the dust. It's coming. It's coming. I thank God for your big row. I appreciate that. I got a witness here said this man needs to be on TV. Glory, Francis Bird, God bless you. I'm just a small boy. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. We're starting up. We're doing well here. But that's why we want to make more noise. We want more people to know about what we're doing, what we're saying, what we're, we're preaching. I'm asking you to like, share, subscribe. The algorithms need to know it. Like it, share it, subscribe it. Let people know, if you ain't never shared another one of these on any other platforms, share this one. Let people know God is concerned about them. God is concerned about them. What's happening with the banks today ain't out of nowhere. What's happening? And I'm going to tell you this. I'm, I'm going to give you this, Brian Keith. It is, there are entertainment. Their job is to keep you sleep. And with entertainment, you have movies. You have music. You have, um, I don't know how to word this one for the, the algorithms or, or YouTube from censoring me, but one um, that I'm seeing on the cell phones, one entertainment piece I'm seeing on the cell phones to keep us numb and, and out of it is um, in the hood, we used to call them uh, skin flicks. I don't know if they, I don't know if that'll pass, but in the hood, uh, the oldest profession, men and women, doing the natural course of things with no clothes on camera. You think that's not on purpose. You think that's not on purpose to keep you unproductive, to keep your brain shut down, to destroy your marriage, to destroy your children, to destroy your family. You think all that filth and sludge and mess free on these cell phones ain't for a purpose. Honey, it's a part of the plan. But I want to get I want to get up here at the end of this to tell you the last part of the plan is the preachers. The preachers just as bad as what I just finished talking about. The preachers are just as bad as what I just finished talking about because we can't get you with that because y'all the moral people. We can't get you with drugs because y'all are the moral people. We can't get you with all kinds of filth and in the entertainment industry and the music because y'all are the moral people. So let's get the bootleg preacher in the pulpit to tell you, just shout, just shout, speak in tongues, just start speaking in tongues, just start praising God, honey. Oh, no, it don't matter what's happening in the world. Uh-uh, we got Jesus. I'm saved, honey. I don't care about the government, honey. God gonna supply my needs. I ain't worried about it. I ain't worried. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's their job to do that to you. When the apostles looked dead at it, 
when the apostles looked dead at the rich and told them God going to judge them. Paul said to the rich in the church, learn how to give, learn how to distribute to the saints because you're dead while you're alive. He talked to the rich women in the church and said, if you don't learn how to serve God people, you're dead while you're alive. He said, those who will be rich, they'll be pierced through with many sorrows. I'm here to tell you that the church got to wake up and come alive because it is the job of the preachers to keep you sedated too. If you keep giving the church all your money, you won't learn how to invest. If you keep giving the church all your money, you won't learn how to put your own kids through college. If you don't put, if you put all your money inside of the church, you will never take care of your family. So it's the preacher's job to prop a lie to you and to get you excited and tell you getting a hundred dollar line and getting a thousand dollar line and getting a twenty dollar line and keep you in these lines until your children despise Jesus, until your grandchildren despise Jesus. Because when I was hungry, the pastor was in a Rolls Royce. When I was thirsty, the first lady got a new hat. When my grandmama lights was off, the first children in the church was Walking around with that new Nintendo Switch. Stephen Furtick's son is on the internet. Elevation. Jesus Christ, Lord help me, Lord. I'm about to lose my mind. Stephen Furtick's son. Up here on YouTube, rapping about spending their money. He talking about he lighting the block up. I, was, I said, boy, for what? Christmas? You lighting the block up. What are you talking about? I remember growing up and hearing gunshots outside my window. I remember people getting stabbed in the chest in the middle of the day. I remember people getting their tongues cut out of their mouth because the drug dealers came down from the late 80s to the early 90s from up north down into the south. And you talking about you lighting up the block. Go sit down somewhere, little verdict. With your silly self. These churches are playing with you. These churches are playing with you. And I'm riled up about it because I hate to see people suffer. I hate to see grandma suffer. I, I hate to see the grandchildren suffer. I hate to see families hurting. Because we're a ministry with very little resources, but I'm, we're constantly giving. We're constantly giving. And then at the end of it, we're sitting here depending on God. At the end of it, we say, well, Lord, you supplied for last month. Now, we're not foolish people. We know how to make sure things are maintained. But at the same time, we can't sit by and see people hurt and not help, especially in, in the body of Christ. But yet people keep giving into and supporting foolishness. These people spend your money in your face. They spend your money in your face. And you say, thank you, ma'am, may I have another? Thank you, sir, may I have another? And even though my heart go out to people, the church halfway deserve it because they, they won't learn. They won't learn. Your rent is already tripled. Your food is already doubled. You're working more and getting less, but yet you're still supporting foolishness. And the church halfway deserves it. But what I want to say to you, saints of God, is let us be sober and vigilant in this last day. What's happening is not happening by happenstance. There is a plan. I want to tell you that the judge is standing at the door. The judge is standing at the door. Let us just come out of Babylon. Brothers, there's 18 of you right now. Like, share, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We're here at 7 o'clock Eastern time every Monday. Saints of God, come on out of Babylon. I'm, I'm just riled up. I got to calm down before I throw this tablet. Come out of Babylon. Come out of Babylon. Just let it go. Just, just fall in love with Jesus. Just fall in love with him. Let him become your day and your night, your sunshine. Just follow him. Grab that Bible and just love it. Whatever the Bible say a man should be, do that. Whatever that Bible say a woman should be, do that. And notice I didn't mention any other uh, pronouns and stuff.
because it ain't real. I want you to grab the word of God. For, forget the preachers and the teachers and, and the theologians and the, grab the word of God. This is called the unction. It's where we depend on the word of God and the spirit of God to direct God's people. Grab that Bible and just say, yes, Lord. So that you will not receive our plagues. Revelations 18, 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. God bless you tonight. Once again, if you would like to be a supporter of the little old unction, we ask that you would uh, do that by going to uh, cash out the unction, dollar sign the unction. It is a great help to the ministry to, to fund this platform, to keep this platform going. Uh, every Monday, we, we have to take the time to come to this platform and do this work. And we ask if anyone would like to support this work, please do. Uh, once again, we do this. We do what we do. Whether or not it's there, we do what we do. Because if I if I have to do this and, and, and grab from other places, the bottom line is this. I'm not going to let God people be uninformed. I'm not going to let y'all just hear foolishness on the web. Everything on the web is just foolishness. And how can I get you excited? How can I get you excited? And nobody is ever truthful with you. If you come to this platform, I'm going to be truthful with you. I'm going to be truthful with you. I already know what it's like to be rejected. I already know what it's like not to be liked. I already know what it's like not to be accepted. So I'm I'm good. I might as well tell the truth. <laughs> Somebody with nothing to lose is dangerous. I might as well tell the truth. And I'm going to tell it till they come after me or, or they, you know, the stuff we was talking about today about these banks and stuff, that's dangerous stuff. If you know what I know, that's dangerous stuff. When you start talking about the modes of entertainment and the job of the boule, let me mention that term, the job of the boule, these boule preachers, oh, I might get into it. Y'all y'all want me to go deep again. I'm going to go deep again. The job of the boule is to keep everybody else down. Long as you give them their Mercedes and their Maybox and their money and their Louis Vuitton and all that stuff, they'll keep y'all shouting. They'll keep you shouting as long as they need to keep you shouting. Because they're part of the boule. Yep. That's why they pledge Greek and belong to uh, Masonic orders, the Shriners, and so forth. And I know that there's a lot of people hearing me now like, hey, man, what you mean? What, what's that? I'm not saying all of y'all are just hell bound. I, I'm just, but I am saying that there's an allegiance that has to happen. And as a kingdom of the, 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 the citizen of the kingdom, I only have one allegiance, and that is to Jesus Christ. I only have one allegiance, and that is to Jesus Christ. Once again, thank you for watching The Unction tonight. I hope it was a blessing to your soul. I hope that you heard something informative. I hope that you heard something that will put some fire under you and let you know God is watching. You're working hard. You're doing all you can. But the powers that be have destroyed this economy, has inflated everything, and your dollar is buying less. So don't feel like a failure. If 17 of you left, don't feel like failures. Don't feel like you're not doing enough. Now, some people are just lazy. But I don't take you to be lazy people, especially many of you that I've been interacting with. Don't feel like failures. The devil is warring against our soul in every way, in every way, including finances. In this world, this Babylonian system. But the Lord see it. And the judge is standing at the door. Love y'all. God bless you. You have a wonderful night. Like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell.